Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Vasco, I'm a professional photographer. I've been working in the photography industry 19 years. And today we're gonna be talking about the 28 to 70 F2 L USM and whether or not it's worth buying. Are there any hidden costs? Will this actually make your work better? We're not gonna do any fancy B-roll and example shots and stuff like that. We're just gonna hang out on the couch. We're just two, we're buddies hanging out on the couch and I'm just gonna give you my opinions on this lens and uh, let you know whether or not you should buy it. Actually, you're gonna let yourself know whether or not you should buy it. I'm just gonna give you my thoughts on the lens. So uh, yeah, let's talk about this lens. When this lens was first announced in 2018, I wanted this lens. I was like, I want that lens in my backpack. I want that in my kit. I'm gonna shoot everything with that lens. It's an amazing lens. And to be honest, I was hesitant. I didn't buy this until October last year, which is like five, almost five years since this lens came out. So. I was hesitant, I was on the fence for a while. I asked myself questions like, is it worth the money? Is it too big? Is it too heavy? Are the images it creates really gonna make my portfolio better? Is it gonna help my portfolio stand out over other photographers? Is it gonna help me attract clients? And those were important questions because if you're spending, this is an expensive lens. It's not really everybody's lens. This is something you're gonna have to save up for or you're gonna have to have a business that, that is running and operating and making money to be able to invest in this. So those are questions I ask myself. And if you're in the same boat, I totally feel you, man. I, I was in that position for a while. And now that I picked up this lens, the honeymoon phase is over. I've, uh, I've sort of like the shine has sort of come off this lens. Is it a good lens? Absolutely. Is it a sharp lens? Absolutely. But is it the best lens? Is this the best lens you can buy for your photography? I don't think so. You know, like, let, let's say like, if you're a studio shooter, this is probably not for you. If you're a wedding shooter, eh. I wouldn't say it's your best choice. There's way better options out there if you want better quality photos. You know, are you a sports shooter? It's probably not for you. What, who is this lens really for? That's the question, right? So that's what we're gonna talk about. Let's, uh, let's look at a couple of the technical things first just to get that out of the way, and then we'll explore these other things. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is weight. This is a heavyweight lens. This is the heavyweight champion of zoom lenses. And yes, I do believe this is the best zoom lens on the market, period. When it comes to zoom lenses, there is nothing else quite like this. It is the best, but the question is, are zoom lenses right for what you wanna do? All right, so first thing we're gonna look at is weight. It weighs 1.4 kilograms or 3.2 pounds. Now, if you pair this up with an R5 with a battery in it, that weighs 1.6 pounds. You put that together, you get 4.8 pounds. So if you're running around a studio, a wedding, shooting events, or whatever the case may be, you're looking at a setup that's just shy of five pounds. Now that doesn't include a flash, if you have a speed light on there, or a battery grip, right? <laughs> that's significant, significantly gonna increase the weight of the setup. And if you're out shooting all day, you're gonna feel it. Now trust me, you know, I'm a pretty robust guy. I can carry a lot of weight, no problem. But even at the end of the day, I feel it. You know, if you're shooting a wedding with this thing, at the end of the day, your back is gonna be like, oh, <laughs> I want to divorce you, right? And if you're shooting in studio all day, this thing is just like, if you're shooting downward, it's just gonna be pulling on your back and your shoulders. You're gonna feel it, you're gonna feel it. So that's just one thing to consider with this lens, weight. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about, and this is a bit of a hidden cost with this lens, and it's something I didn't realize, until, well, I kind of realized it, but I didn't really realize how expensive it would be until after I bought the lens, is the fact that we're looking at a 95 millimeter filter thread. Now, I don't know what it is about these companies, Tiffin, B plus W, whatever the case may be, but as soon as you go up to 82, they get expensive. And then when you move up to 95, they get even more expensive. So I guess it's kind of like owning a BMW, if you take it in for repairs, they're gonna charge you extra for whatever just because it's a BMW. And the same thing goes with 95 millimeter filters. Like, they're, they're crazy expensive. And I did a video here, which is this side here, about Nisi filters. And Nisi filters give you really good quality filters at a price that's a little more fair than some of the bigger name uh, filter companies. But that's one of the hidden costs. You're gonna have to buy a UV filter. You're gonna have to buy a polarizer. Maybe if you do video, you're gonna have to buy a VND filter or a mist filter. And one thing I will say that, we'll talk about it in the video section, but you definitely want a mist filter for this lens if you're shooting people because it's so damn sharp. But yeah, filters for this lens are expensive. All right, next up we have focusing, focusing. Now, some people have brought up the question is like, this is a big lens with big glass elements. They're heavy glass elements. Can the lens focus fast? Can it keep up with things? 
And I can tell you, <laughs> the autofocus on this lens is blazing fast. From infinity to closest focus distance, it just zoom, 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 zoom. It's so fast. You're not gonna have any issues focusing on subject matter. Tracking, tracking in low light, like if you're shooting weddings and events, receptions, you know, concerts, that kind of thing. Tracking in low light is fantastic. I, I haven't had experienced any issues with the R5 in terms of low light autofocus or even like studio autofocus. It's super fast, super responsive. I give this a 10 out of 10 when it comes to autofocus speed. All right, so now let's talk about focal length. We got a 28 to 70 here, or is it? I don't feel like this is a true 70 millimeter lens. I feel it's more like a 65, 67 something like that. So to call this like a 28 to 65 makes more sense to me visually when I look at the photos than a 20, 28 to 70. It just doesn't seem long enough to be a 70. And the thing I'll tell you with this, this, this um, zoom lens is like 28 is exciting. I find 35 to be a nice focal length, but you get to 40, 50, 60, 70, and it's just so boring. Like that's the mid-range zoom area. And those focal lengths are just Eh, like your eye naturally sees 50 millimeters as a focal length. That's how you perceive the world. So to shoot photos in the same focal length that you see the world is kind of, to me anyway, everyone's, you're entitled to your own opinion. But to me, I find those mid-range zoom focal lengths just so boring. 40, 50, 60, 70, eh. You know, so this is a great lens in terms of focal lengths, but it's not very, it's not exciting. Like 200 millimeters exciting. 24 millimeters exciting, 20 millimeters even more exciting. That, that gives your images character and motion or compression or something. With this lens, it's just kind of hmm, mid-range zoom. It's neither here nor there. The images are good. Image quality is fantastic. Sharpness, amazing. We'll talk about that next. But yeah, focal length, so-so. All right, so next up, let's talk about sharpness. Now, when it comes to sharpness, this lens is absolutely fantastic. It's right up there with this lens. This is the 85 1.2. This is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever seen in my life. It is absolutely incredible, resolves a ton of detail. When I first looked at shots with this lens, I was blown away. And the same thing happened with this lens. When I first took some shots and looked at them, I was blown away. I have my first impressions video linked above if you wanna check it out. But I was actually standing across the street, it's in this video, <laughs> with this lens shooting somebody's window and then I zoomed in in Lightroom and I could like look at the vase in the window through the screen through the glass and I could make out the details of the vase so this lens resolves a ton of detail and it's super sharp now one of the things that you could say is that maybe it's too sharp <laughs> if you shoot headshots and portraits of people you can see every pore every hair every little detail and that's a good thing and a bad thing depending on what you want to do, right? And I wouldn't say it's medium format resolution, but it's really close. It's really close. Same with the 85, like the resolution of this lens and this lens. And then there's also the 100 mil macro, the 51.2. And these are just high, high resolution lenses. And if you want to take advantage of these lenses, I would recommend shooting on a high resolution sensor like the one found on the R5 or the R7. If you're shooting with an R, an R6, an R6 Mark II, an R8, you know, these cameras don't really have high resolution sensors. They have good sensors, don't get me wrong, but they're not high resolving sensors. So you're not gonna take full advantage of lenses like this and their resolving power. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's talk about bokeh for a second. Is this a bokeh monster at F2? No, it's not. The 85 millimeter 1.2 kicks its butt easily. The photos coming out of this have way more character than the photos coming out of this. Here's the 35 f 1.4. And don't you miss it when Canon used to make nice small lenses? Like, <laughs> what's going on here? Look at this 85. Wow. Anyway, but yeah, the 35 1.4, this is the EF version. And by the way, if you're using EF lenses on the new RF mount, they work absolutely amazing. The focus speed, everything is just like right on point. It's super fast, super accurate. So there is no problem using EF lenses on RF bodies. But yeah, this 35 1.4 will outperform this 28 to 70. The 85 1.2 will outperform the 28 to 70. I would assume the 51.2 would outperform this as well, but I don't own that lens because it's a 50 millimeter and that's just, it's a boring focal length. So I don't want to waste my money on it, but I would assume that lens is better than this in terms of primes, but this will 
outperform other prime lenses that are slower. But yeah, bokeh, bokeh in this is possible. It looks okay. It's soft, it's creamy, it's good. Ideally, what you wanna do is like go to 70 millimeter and get as close to your subject as possible. And that'll make the background nice and creamy. But in terms of like bokehliciousness, the 85 1.2 or the 35 1.4 definitely do a better job with bokeh. So if you're looking for a bokeh monster lens, this isn't the one. However, if you're shooting weddings and events and you want just a little background separation for your subjects to make them pop, this is okay. It's okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily go to this if I wanted bokeh or bokeh, however you want to pronounce it. So Bokeh, I wouldn't really give it super high marks. If that's something you're really into, I wouldn't really consider this as your go-to lens. All right, so let's talk about this lens from a videography perspective. Is this lens worth buying for videography? The answer is yes and no. It depends on how you shoot. Number one, this lens has no IS. So if you're looking for image stabilization, forget about it you're gonna have to use IBIS in the camera and you're gonna have to use a gimbal. Now, put this lens on a gimbal, go ahead. Put, <laughs> put five pounds of weight on a gimbal, have fun. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for any kind of run and gun video type stuff. However, if you're shooting YouTube videos or interviews, I think this is a fantastic lens for that. It does suffer from focus breathing, so if you like doing focus pulls, just be aware of that. There's focus breathing with this lens. I would recommend the 24 to 70 for video over this, but if you do have your lens locked off on the camera on a tripod and it's just sitting there recording, this is a fantastic video lens. Obviously, I would prefer primes if you wanna go for a super bokeh background, but the advantage with this lens is it gives you versatility and really good quality. So if you wanna shoot some videos with this lens, with this lens locked off on a tripod and that's it, I would say go for it. But if you're a run and gun video maker and you like to zoom in and out and you wanna use a gimbal, I would, uh, I would strongly recommend a different lens. 24 to 105 or 24 to 70, I think would be your best choice. But one more thing for video is when you're shooting people, <laughs> the resolution of this lens, in fact, a lot of the L-series lenses with the Canon RF mount are super, super, super sharp. And what I do is I put a, a filter on, I have it on here, I'm filming with the 15 to 35, and this is a ProMist 1.8 filter. Now this is just a very, very, very slight diffusion filter, but it'll soften up the skin and take away a lot of the harshness, especially if you're shooting people with wrinkles and you wanna try and minimize the wrinkles or blemishes on the skin or something like that. A, uh, a Tiffin Pro Mist 1.8 or Black Pro Mist 1.8 would be a good choice. Just put that back on there. But yeah, so if you're buying a Pro Mist filter for this lens, just keep in mind, you're dealing with a 95 millimeter filter thread. So that Pro Mist filter is going to be very expensive. All right, so we've touched base on some of the technical things that people look at when they, they think about buying this lens. So now let's look at who this lens is for, where is its best application, who should buy it, who should avoid it. So the first group of people who should definitely avoid this lens are people who shoot with strobes. If you shoot with studio flash, strobes, that kind of thing, don't buy this lens. It's a waste of your money. If you're shooting in situations, like if you use studio strobes, your aperture is set to f8, f9, you have the flashes firing, your depth of field is big. And just keep in mind, this is an F2 lens and that's what you're paying for is that F2 maximum aperture, letting a lot of light in. And if you're shooting in studio and you're using studio flashes and you're stopping down your lens to F8, F9, it's not for you, right? You're just, you're just carrying, a lot, carrying around a lot of weight and you're spending a lot of money for not much return. If you're shooting in studio, I would definitely recommend the 24 to 105 <laughs> this lens. It's light as a feather and you have a nice versatile zoom range. And when you stop it down to F8, it's super sharp, super clean, super crispy. So if you're shooting in studio, I would recommend the 24 to 105 over the 28 to 70. Now, there is a caveat there. The resolving power of this lens is greater than this lens. So if you're shooting product photography and you're focus stacking and you want, if you want all the fine little details and micro contrast, and if you're shooting that kind of work, like the high-end product photography work. First of all, you probably should be shooting with medium format, not full frame, but if you are shooting with full frame, this would be a good option there because it's just, you're, the camera's on a tripod, you're focused in on something, you're not carrying the weight of the lens, 
you're using Capture One or whatever to take the shots, you're focus stacking. And this is a good tool for that kind of thing. But in terms of like shooting portraits, headshots of people, family shots, this is definitely a better option. Number one, it's, it's a lot lighter. So when you're shooting a wedding, for example, like you have the camera up and you're click, click. Okay, then you're looking for your next shot. Click, 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 click. And then you spend a good time of, of your time at a wedding just wandering around looking for shots or waiting for action to happen. So you're not, you don't have the camera up to your face all the time. But if you're in a studio and you're shooting people, it's click, 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 click. Okay, let's see, check settings. Okay, click, 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 click. So you could be an hour and you're shooting a lot of photos. And like I said, the weight of this lens, you can definitely feel it. And I've shot portrait sessions with this lens just to test it out. And I honestly much prefer using this just because it's light. It's quick, it's versatile, you can zoom in, zoom out, and it just, it's just easy and you don't feel like your back is going to you know, divorce you after the shoot. So for studio shooters, if you're shooting people, recommend this. If you're shooting products and you need high detail, I would suggest this or the 100 mil macro depending on the size of your products. Okay, so now let's talk about who this lens is for. Who will benefit from buying this lens? Wedding photographers, maybe. Event photographers, maybe. Concert photographers, yes. If you're shooting live events and concerts and things like that, and you want one lens that can do just about everything, I would say this is the lens for you because it's, you got a little you know zoom range here. It's not the biggest zoom range, but it allows you to get in a little closer, get a little wider. You can shoot shots of people's heads, group shots. You can, you know, take wide shots. Well, not super wide. 28 isn't super wide, but it's wide enough. And it's F2, so it's good in low light. So for concert type photography, I would say this is definitely a good lens to use. For event photography, like corporate events and things like that, uh, I don't know. I don't know because concerts are one of those places where you don't want to be changing your lens. You just want a camera and a lens and you want one lens to do everything. And that's where this would shine. But if you're shooting like a corporate event or even a wedding, I, I don't know if this would be your best choice because you know, those are the types of environments where you have a moment. Well, weddings can be fast paced depending on what part of the wedding you're shooting. Like if I'm shooting the, the ceremony with the ring and the kiss and all that, I want this lens on my camera simply because it gives me a little more versatility to zoom in, zoom out, compose shots, right? Which is great, but all the other parts of the wedding, I'm shooting with an 85 and a 35, you know? So this is the lens I'll just use only when I need the most versatility. Otherwise, these two lenses will take me through the whole day from beginning to end. And the image quality that comes out of these two lenses is better than this lens. Now, if you're shooting with available light, natural light, remember, this is an F2. This is a 1.2, this is a 1.4. So these definitely take advantage of natural light and give you more bokeh than this lens. So, I mean, if you only have one lens, this would be it. Or so maybe the 24 to 70, 2.8. 2.8 is a good, 2.8 lets in a lot of light as well. This lets in more light. I would say this is better than the 24 to 70. I've shot weddings with the 24 to 105, and this is an F4 lens, and it just struggles. I mean, it depends on how much light you have to work with. If it's an outdoor wedding, this is great. Like, I'll take this over this for an outdoor wedding just because of the versatility, but only for the ring ceremony. I only use zoom lenses for the ring ceremony for the wedding itself. And then everything else, it's these two lenses. So I don't know, like who is this lens for? I, I, I think concert photographers definitely, it, I wouldn't say this is a good travel lens because it's so big, it's gonna attract a lot of attention. You pull this out on the street, people look at you right away. And I mean, if if you're in your own city or whatever, fine. If you're traveling somewhere else where it's not so safe, probably don't want to pull this out. The 24 to 105 is definitely a better travel lens. So this lens is a bit of a conundrum, right? Because who is it for? What is it good at? I mean, when it comes to weddings, prime lenses with fast apertures are better. When it comes to event photography, Maybe like if you're shooting people up on stage or something, but it won't give you that reach. I guess 24 to 70 and 28 to, or 70 to 200 and 28 to 70 would be a good combination. 
uh, for, for those kinds of events where you need more zoom and you're not really trying to create artistic shots. If you want more artistic, go with the prime. So the big question for me when I bought this lens too was, will I be able to shoot photos with this lens that make my portfolio stand out from other photographers? Is it going to attract clients? Is, are, are people going to see my shots and say, whoa, those are so good? And I really don't think so. I don't think that's the case with this lens. I feel like an 85 and a 35 produce images with way more character, more bokeh, more... It just has a certain look. Primes just have a certain look that's different. And the 28 to 70, it's close. It's close, but it's not quite there. I've heard people say, and I've, I used to say it myself, is this replaces the primes. You get a 28 millimeter prime in here. You get a 35 millimeter prime, 50 millimeter prime, and it replaces all those three lenses. And it depends on how you shoot, right? If, if you shoot at f2, f4, f5, whatever, 5.6, then yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll do. But if you're looking for that maximum aperture, super bokeh kind of look, then no, it won't do. Primes are better. So that's, uh, that's my honest opinion on this lens. It's weather sealed too, which is good, but you probably already knew that. This lens has been out for a long time. I'm gonna do a technical review on this lens and we're gonna look at like the focus and its sharpness and we're gonna go all through all the technical specs of it. But for now, I just wanted to give you my opinions as somebody who's owned this lens for several months and taken it out to a lot of shoots, worked with a lot of clients. You know, what's my experience? Would I buy it again? I think so. I think it's, I think it's worth the money, but I would definitely buy primes first, like for what I do anyway, everyone's different, but I, th I think primes are way better than zoom lenses in every respect. But um, sometimes you just want the versatility. So these lenses, this is a 24 to 105 and 28 to 70. If you need versatility and you want one lens to be able to do a lot of things, this is probably the best choice on the market from any brand out there. <laughs> 28 to 70, F2 super sharp all the way through from 28 all the way to 65 or 70. I don't, I don't really think it's a real 70 though, but um, yeah, those are my thoughts. Now, whether or not you should buy it, that's up to you. If it's something you're going to use and make money with, I would definitely recommend it. If it's something that you wanna buy with credit card and pay off later, maybe wait, save up a little bit more money before you buy it. I don't think it's that impressive of a lens, I would definitely say the 85 will, will allow you to take shots that'll build up your portfolio and you'll create some really unique images that, that'll stand out with an 85, 1.2. But this is kind of like middle of the road, kind of so-so, average, kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say average, but it's just like the focal range and the images you get out of it, they're really sharp, really clean, really crispy, but it's not exciting. All right, and that's my little talk on the 28 to 70. Hopefully that enlightened you and gave you a slightly different perspective from the perspective of people who just have the lens for a couple days and are all like, oh my God, this is so amazing, right? I mean, there's a difference between having a lens and being in that honeymoon phase and being in love with it. And then, you know, you've had it for several months, you've used it, you've experienced it, and you can have like a different kind of opinion. So hopefully this, this video had value for you. And if it did, definitely subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more lens videos, camera gear videos, uh, photography tutorials, lighting tutorials, all that kind of fun stuff on the channel. So definitely subscribe and I'll see you guys in another video.